The SCX2 is dead. The new builder's kit is in town. What's going on everyone? Welcome back to another video. This time I've got the newest release from Axial here on the bench. This is the SCX-10 III Base Camp Builder's Kit. Now this truck comes just with the bare bones. No wheels, tires, bumpers, or body. I have added wheels and tires for display at this point, but you'll need to choose your own for your build. This is a replacement for the SCX-10 II Raw Builder's Kit. And the SCX-10 II Raw Builder's Kit was a good deal. A lot of people had a lot of builds that started like that, but it was an aging platform. The SCX-10 II chassis doesn't have the same clearances. It's got a lot of parts that are not quite up to today's standards with the you know weaker pan hard mount, the lesser quality plastic shocks. Just a number of the things about that truck were getting pretty old and not exactly up to fighting toe to toe with some of the other options available today. And that's why Axial has replaced it now with this new version. Now, like I said, this is called the SCX-10 III Base Camp Builder's Kit, but while it may be called the Base Camp Builder's Kit, don't let that confuse you. You may be familiar with the SCX-10 III Base Camp or many of the other Axial SCX-10 like the Jeep Gladiator, the Bronco, or the Jeep JL. All of those are named after the body that they come on, like the Base Camp was. But now we have this one, which is called the base camp, but it doesn't come with a body, which is odd. Also, the base camp that you may be familiar with came with portal axles, where this comes with the straight axles. So when you're going to buy upgrades or parts for your base camp, you're going to, have to be pretty careful and make sure that you're getting the ones that are for the right version of it. A little funky there. I think maybe they kind of forgot how they normally name their kits and just carried it over because it's like, ah, oh, it sounds like a good starting point name. But, you know, beyond that, this is very familiar with a lot of the parts. Like we mentioned, this does come with the AR45 straight axles. It does come with a black diff cover rather than the red diff cover that we've seen with most of the other AR45 axle options. Beyond that, those axles are unchanged. The rear axle, just like you remembered as well, also with a black diff cover. The transmission is the LCXU transmission, same that came in the base camp RTR. However, this does have the four gear set in it rather than the five gear set that you saw on that one because this is made to have the proper gearing for the straight axles rather than the portals. That was the design behind this transmission is that you change the gear set so it changed the rotation of the transmission rather than just changing the rotation of your motor. It was a little bit of an odd choice at the time, still a little bit odd, but it's a nice transmission. It's a lot more compact and keeps the motor lower compared to the standard SCX-10 III transmission, which puts it super high and it's a real pain to work on. Now, this also comes with the new dig unit. Axial released this LCXU dig unit separately last week, but now it's included in this. This raw builder's kit doesn't come with the parts to build it without that dig unit. If you didn't want it, you can just lock it out though. It comes with the brackets that allows you to do that fairly easily. So everything's there. It doesn't really change the build much to lock it out or build it so that you can add the servo as I've done here. The chassis for the SCX-10 III Base Camp Builder's Kit here, pretty much unchanged from any of the other SCX-10 III's other than the Gladiator, with, which has the longer tail section. We do have the you know, three servo style mount that you see up here. I believe that only came on the Base Camp previously because of not having that forward mounted motor. We do have also the winch mount there on the bumper if you wanted to mount it up front versus on one of these other accessory areas. It comes with multiple battery mounting positions. You can kind of put it wherever you have it or wherever you would like it for your custom build application. The shocks on this are 95 millimeters long. That's to compensate for the straight axle versus portal. Portals come with a little bit shorter shock to keep everything around the same ride height on the chassis. It does make it stand up quite a bit. It looks pretty tall. You could get it lowered down. You could throw some 90 millimeter shocks on there. You know, even shorter if you like to try and get everything down nice and low. Plenty of options there depending on what you're looking for. 
It's got the straight style pan hard mount rather than the kind of wicked bent one that you've seen on many of the other Axial SCX 10.3s. Some other key things to note on the chassis, you do get the metal cast pan hard mount that we first saw on the Basecamp RTR. That's a great piece that they've included. It's a value there. Upgrading that pan hard mount before was something that you were gonna probably have to do fairly quickly. To have it done that way, you're not gonna have to replace that likely ever. The all metal bodied shocks, they were easy to build. They seem to be holding oil over the week or so that they've been together. Of course, I haven't been driving it yet, but nicely constructed, seem to be fairly well built. A lot of the rest of this build just went together really easy, nothing crazy. It was a nice build. The manual was done well. I didn't find any, you know, immediate errors that popped up at me. While building, I did run into uh, one thing and that was the shock collars. They were too tight on two of the four shocks. I couldn't quite get them started. I ran a body reamer through them, just kind of loosen them up a little bit. And that seemed to work enough to allow me to get those started. Not a big deal. Probably something you'll see updated as time goes. That was the only thing that I, I noticed as far as that went though. The links on this truck are still the nice beefy stainless links that you've seen on all the other SCX 10.3s. They still have the cross drilled hole and the reverse threads on one end, like a turnbuckle. I really dislike that. I really don't like the look of that hole in links and we don't need turnbuckle style links on a trail truck like this. I wish that they would ditch that style link. I think it's a, I think it's a poor choice for our market, but they decided to do it once and they're just running with it. Overall, this build went very quickly. It's not really a full build. You're only doing the chassis and axles. So things just go quickly because you don't have a lot of extra stuff to do, but as far as the you know build and following the instructions went, it's just, a, it's an easy one at that. The only things that kind of bug me with the instructions is the design of the SCX 10.3 puts a lot of very similar size screws in steps either with each other or right next to each other. So 10 millimeter and 12 millimeter of flat heads or button heads in steps at the same time or right next to each other. So you have spent a lot of time measuring for the correct screw length or pre-sorting depending on how your preference in building goes. I wish that that was paid more attention to during the design process of the SCX 10.3. Something that I didn't remember because I haven't built an SCX 10.3 kit since the original release of the JL Wrangler. But at the end of the day, the big question is, should you buy this or not? And if you're looking for an SCX 10.3 and you want to put it together yourself, or you want to save yourself some money, this is absolutely the one to get. You don't get the, all the electronics, things like that, which are kind of a value in the RTRs. The Basecamp RTR is a good deal. And the Basecamp RTR has been my suggestion for SCX 10.3s since it was released. But if you wanna save yourself some money, you know you're doing a custom project, you know you're gonna put in a nice steering servo, your own radio, motor ESC, there's no reason not to choose this. Before, if that question was kind of like, well, do I get a base camp RTR or do I save a bunch of money and go to an SCX 10.2 raw builders kit? That was a harder decision because the SCX 10.2 again was getting pretty old and not exactly up to the same specs. Whereas the base camp, much better platform, much better built, but was a significant price jump. Now this is an easy decision. As you can see, I've already thrown some wheels and tires on here. These are the Vanquish Gold Impact wheels and the Vanquish Falcon 4.65 inch tall tires. I thought they were a nice fit for this and it just gives me a, a way to roll it around and start looking at it, trying to figure out what kind of project I wanna do with it. Axial Fest is coming up here before long for me and this seems like kind of a perfect little platform to build something new for that event. So I gotta come up with something. I don't know if I should do some sort of buggy, something different. I don't know. I'm open to suggestions. I always tend to lean towards buggies because that's the style of things that I do really enjoy. If so, I got to come up with a style of the front, whether it's Jeep or Jeep Liberty, old school style, Samurai, who knows what. If you have suggestions on a body style for a buggy, let me know. Or if you think there's some other type of project we should do with this, let me know what those would be as well. I got to make up my mind pretty soon here because I will, uh, I've got about a month until Axial Fest hits. So time flies trying to get a project like that done. 
be interested to hear your feedback on it. And if you have any feedback on the newest release from Axial, do you think it's gonna be a hit? Is it for you? Have you been shopping for an SCX10 III and now this makes it a much easier choice? I could see how that could be the case. But let me know what your thoughts are. Put them in the comments below. Always enjoy reading them. Hit the like button if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe if you're not already. Hit the notification bell so you see the videos as soon as they get uploaded. As always, thanks again for watching and we'll see you on the next one.